welcoming you back to the desk of Cadicorus. Join us as we partake into a new installment of Current Quickies. <laughs> ah, hello my duckies, and this time we'll be having a look at The Witness. Phew. This game is indescribable. Jonathan Blow's last game, Braid, I personally really loved, and when I heard that The Witness was being made by him, I stayed deliberately as far away as possible from any explanation, any trailers, any information whatsoever, because I wanted to experience this first hand. And after many grueling hours, I'm glad I did, because going into this clueless is practically the point of the game. So, it's kind of hard to talk about, but how did I get on with it? Well... <sighs> This game is wonderful, but like I said, it's insanely difficult to talk about, especially without spoilers. I won't be spoiling crucial details in this video, but in terms of how to play the game from an emotional standpoint, I may need to explain that a little bit later. Anyway, The Witness is a nonlinear puzzle exploration game in which you alone must solve hundreds on top of hundreds of puzzles scattered across a deserted island, all of which are grouped into different themed areas and feature lasers that need activating in order to light up the top of a mountain on the far end of the island. That is all it is in total theory, but the context, themes, and philosophy of the game garnishes itself with what really pull it through as an interactive form of entertainment. To talk about it from a pure technical standpoint, though, The Witness is an utterly beautiful game with, despite the simplicity here and there, some of the most vibrantly coloured, saturated, contrasted, and incredibly fascinating areas I've ever seen in a video game, and it takes what it's I can do and literally just does everything it can with it. Many areas here you would have seen in hundreds of games before, but it's the way they all interconnect with hundreds of shortcuts and the way you get to know them from the constant exploring that makes them very memorable. And soon, without you even realizing it, you would have come to know inside out and possibly even love this entirely virtual environment from the pure memorable nature of its level design and puzzle structure. This then works its way into the gameplay, which does the same thing multiple times over, but in true fantastic puzzling fashion, takes everything you learn from one puzzle and totally mixes it up in every major area you come across. By no guidance at all, no hand holding whatsoever, no hint boxes, nothing but you, the environment, and your logical thinking, the entire game works its way around the same mover line through a grid puzzles, but has completely different and increasingly imaginative ways of solving them each time. Again, without spoiling anything major, the level of detail here is so fucking crazy it could be a case of having the puzzle and the solution right there in front of you on the grid for you to work out. Or you could, in my favourite style of puzzle in the game, actually use the environment as your answer. Whether it be whatever you're hearing around the area with pitches or different sound effects made from your feet, or piecing elements of the environment together such as shadows, sunlight, tree branches, or rock formations. Meaning that in many cases, the main puzzles in the game are actually the environment itself, the island itself, and the grids are just canvases in which to express your answer. And let me tell you, as far as puzzles that look very similar go, every single one is fair and all feel totally different. And there's like 500 of these fuckers everywhere. The level of detail gone into incorporating logical thinking and environmental deduction into your direct relationship with the island itself and how you progress through the game and appreciate the imagination and creativity gone into how the puzzles were constructed is absolutely gobsmacking for 500 totally different puzzles and because of that not including anything else I'll be talking about in a second it makes this game one of my favourite puzzle games ever made from mechanics alone. The game also excels in its exploration since finding certain puzzles too difficult doesn't mean your progress is hindered. You can either mean you haven't found a particular solution to it yet that you can figure out with an easier puzzle somewhere else on the island or that you just need a break from that particular visual palette and come back fresh, ready, looking around and blast through everything in a few minutes. That happened to me a few times for definite. However, yes, this game is very hard to talk about on more than a technical level since the entire context of the audio logs, movie theatre clips you find codes for all over the island point of interesting philosophical questioning and personal investment between you and the island will mean nowhere near as much, if not nothing, unless you experience it for yourself and never use a walkthrough. This is very much a game of personality and how each individual player can get through it. I know that in itself sounds like a cop-out of explaining more of the meaning behind most of what the game offers, but it's so difficult to do that without spoiling things and breaking the point. There are themes brought up in this game, and not clearly, all the way demolished through the fourth wall, including reward systems, human accomplishment, dreams, and game design as a whole, and how it brings them all up and in a way that uses you to illustrate most of its points, both literally with how the island looks and how it's made, and figuratively with how the game is played, is interesting and thought-provoking. All I will say is that if you're curious about playing this game, you need to keep that curiosity up. Curiosity, patience, broken expectations for utter clarity, and total zen is needed from start to end. An hour in this game, despite being the same kind of puzzle everywhere, means nothing in the grand scheme of things. And if you're a more casual puzzle player like myself and find yourself getting extremely frustrated and angry once or twice, you may feel like you've been slapped in the face by some of the messages it does bring forward about how you deal with rewards and games and how you feel rewarded through life and what you expect to get back from games and life in that regard. Your level of curiosity and patience need to be mountains higher than your level of expectation and deserve feelings of concrete answers. And if you can do that, then you will love this game. Even I, as a casual puzzle player, felt unbelievably fucked over when reaching the quote unquote end game. But once coming back to it a day later and carrying on through the more fucking really hard puzzles, I ended up feeling more enlightened the more I got through it. In that sense, can I recommend this game to everyone? Fuck no. I'm sorry, but fuck no. Yes, I found it ingenious in the way that it presented itself as a video game and the questions it raised, and as a casual puzzle player, my level of appreciation for how smart it is is dumbfounding. But if it weren't for me talking with Brutal Moves more about what the game offers without him spoiling anything to me, I probably would have given up and not bothered to continue, thinking it wasn't worth the level of aggravation. It's a tough, brutal bastard of a puzzle game that only truly satisfies those totally willing to let go of their emotions and just keep on trudging forward through the increasing mental strain in the puzzles and how difficultly hidden the main buckets of any resemblance of plot are in the game in the form of the audio logs. And I've read one or two reviews by this point of people complaining about how pretentious the game is and how they couldn't finish it because of that and everything else, but honestly I must admit I felt exactly the same way until I got my dedication levels and curiosity levels to such a point where I didn't want to be left in the dust. And sure enough, through all the game playing me and me playing the game, things were made more clear the further I got, and I slowly understood more of the point and then reflected on the entire experience and then it clicked with me. But yes, it only just started to click with me once I reached a near 100% completion, so yes, I can't recommend it for everyone at all. What the game expects you to do to get the most out of it is fucking insane. But if what I said sounds appealing to you, pick this game up immediately. It's spectacular. 
spectacular in that regard. If not, though, you may enjoy the exploration puzzles and the mechanics alone like I did to start off with, but just don't expect any more than that if you head for the basic endgame, because I did and I got angry. But then I calmed down and came back to it, and then it'll click with me. Oh, I don't know. I still firmly believe the game should have at least gave me more of a reason to drive myself, especially after the end game. Whether it's the entire point or not, it's still frustrating to me as a player when I was made to feel like that and that I just didn't get it when the game takes pride in not telling you anything in the first place. And of course, for me personally, the feeling of beating a really hard puzzle to only remember that at some future point there would definitely be another fucking wall of a difficult puzzle I can't get past really got to me and slightly tainted my experience and impressions I made around the gorgeous island, which I never wanted to feel, but there you go. Anger can do that to you when you aren't a puzzling natural like me, so that's more a personal grievance. <sighs> And so, I could personally give this game a 9 out of 10. Whether or not it was entirely the point, I still felt like some of the more brain-melting and frustrating moments were a little bit too unfulfilled. And even besides that, it's still an incredible puzzle game and general gaming experience. Just approach with caution. Can't make, can't make that any clearer. Approach with caution, because you will be tested. Mentally and emotionally. I'm a wreck. You. Ay, 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 ay.